Hey guys, welcome back to the MyGo YouTube channel. This video, I'm gonna look at planning out your grow area. Um, if you're starting, it'll be a guide to you know, what sort of area in terms of grow tent size you might need, um, what light you might size, wattage light you might need for that grow tent, um, what yields you might expect, all that type of thing. There is a range in terms of performance of equipment um, ability of the users, processes that are, you are using um, in terms of how much yield you can get from each of these setups and I will try to give you a reasonable achievable uh, guide to, um, to what you can get out of your equipment. Well, the first one and possibly the most controversial one is looking at yield estimates um, and no, looking at them in a number of different ways. Um, so looking at photo period versus auto flower. Um, so that's where you get on to the 12-12 cycle with photo periods for flowering and auto flower, which you can run pretty much up to 24 hours, lights on a day, uh, right through the uh, grow cycle. Looking at larger plants and smaller plants, what type of lighting you're using, and then looking at yield maybe by area, different area sizes. And so there is a range. Um, auto flowers, although they grow a lot quicker, tend to be tend to grow relatively small. So the plants might get to say two to three feet high, maybe sixty to ninety centimeters high, um, and around the same in width uh, or circumference at least, um, or diameter, I should say. Uh, when fully grown, they do tend to be uh, have, a, have a, a, a smaller maximum size. Um, whereas photo period plants, and depending on the genetics, but you can have them in the veg cycle and grow them very, very big before switching them over to flower. And I've seen people, for example, fill a whole four foot by four foot tent with just one plant. The pro pluses and minuses are. Um, you know, to grow the plants larger, you need less plants to fill the space. But as I said, you also need to grow them for a longer, veg them for a longer time. Um, so sometimes people will be getting a massive yield, for example, out of a four by four, but it could be taking from one plant, but it could be taking them five months to complete the cycle. Whereas if you're growing a lot of smaller plants, even in the photo period, photo period plants, um, those plants will fill the canopy, which is your target in veg, quicker, because you've got more of them growing less each to fill the space. Um, and your overall cycle time will be less. Auto flowers, uh, your cycle time for, for, for photo periods will be 16 to 20 weeks. Again, that's a rough guide. Um, about eight weeks for vegging and about eight weeks for flowering. Um, and people, some people extend that and varieties um, perform in different ways, you know, different genetics. So that's a rough guide. Whereas auto flowers, although you may not get the same yield per plant or per square meter, um, it's a much, much shorter cycle, grow cycle. So, um, you know, if you're getting three quarters of the yield with auto flowers out of the same space, but doing it twice as fast, there's an obvious advantage. Overall, you're going to get one and a half times per square foot per month or whatever time um, period you're, you're measuring over. So that's why I have small plants in there at 50 to 90 grams or 1.5 to 3 ounces. That's sort of a general range for, um, for that size of plant. Whereas larger plants, the range can be much higher. Um, you decide which should suit you more. In terms of LED grow lights then, so they got, got efficient. Um, and compared to the HID grow lights there below on the table, they are uh, LED grow lights are about 50% more efficient, so you'd expect about 50% yield. So that's the sort of ratios there um, in terms of grams per watt. So this is, you have a 600 watt HPS, um, and you'd be expecting to get 600 by 0.6, so about 360 grams. Um, up to 600 grams from that fixture. Now again, that would depend on whether you're running autos, whether you're running photos, small plants, large plants, genetics. So there isn't just a range of 
um, yield potential depending on the technology that you're using in terms of lights but also the medium which is the growing medium and growing styles and environment and all that stuff and that's why there is such a big range in these things so for example if you're growing in soil uh, you'll most likely have a lower yield than growing in cocoa all other things being equal and lower again than growing in hydro being the most efficient um, it's able to get uh, what uh, the nutrients and the air and everything else to the roots in a more efficient manner and enables higher growth rates and hence the ranges um, that are here but if you are growing in soil if you're an experienced grower um, if you don't believe you have your you know all of your conditions uh, environment mental conditions perfectly dialed in you'd expect to be in the lower range for experienced grower using high highly efficient medium um, and you believe your environment and uh, nutrients and everything aren't spot on you should expect to be up at the higher range um, so yeah in terms of, of uh, breaking it down by area then you can see there for one square foot about 30 to 54 grams it's just translating all the same sort of specifications or performance uh, just by watt and by, by area and when you go into tent size then so four foot by four foot about 500 to about 900 grams is what uh, you should expect 17 to 29 ounces um, that's with LED now high efficiency LED um, and uh, for five foot proportionally you can see up 750 up to 1350 grams so there'll be lots of discussion I'm sure there's lots of people that are getting different things but um, I did test this before doing the video on Instagram and YouTube and just asked around and I do think these uh, these estimates are are reasonable they're achievable um, there are claims of three uh, three to four grams per watt I don't think they're possible personally I think it may be confused between dry yield and wet yield so people may be weighing them before they've been properly dried and cured um, and getting the three or four grams there because um, it doesn't really seem feasible to me I've seen um, a four by four packed out getting you know 900 grams so up there at sort of 1.8 grams per watt two grams per watt and uh, it's just impossible well it's hard to believe that more buds can be packed into that area and doubling it seems to me to be impossible but um, you know people run CO2 they run very high light levels they're, 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 they're very strong genetics certainly may be possible but um, I wouldn't be uh, like this is a reasonable target to achieve and I wouldn't be put off by, uh, by those numbers so the next thing is, is uh, trying to establish the numbers of plants um, this is, again this is a rough guide uh, it's asked of me a lot and it's tr just trying to give people a bit of perspective so small tent size two foot by two foot pretty much the minimum that anybody would use you could have one plant in it and as I said veg it for a long time or if it's an auto hope that it fills out space but it may be better to have um, more plants and of course the safety numbers if an issue happens to your plant so between one and three so it's a square space and you can't really you know you'd like to have four like a grid in, in, in a two by two but that means you're going to have small pots small plants small capacity in the pots means they're going to dry out easier etc etc so hence I'm sitting on the fence a little bit with one between one and three um, four foot by two foot again three to five you could have three in a row so four foot by two foot is a, a long tent basically so you could have three in a row um, or you could have them sort of slightly offset as you go to the tent really what you want is the canopy to be full to accept all of the light that's going from the grow light the way I describe it is a little bit like a um, you know like solar panels you want that solar panel to be the full area um, and that think about that with leaves you want to generate a canopy across that tent where it is absorbing all of the light shone down and none of it or the minimum amount is being wasted up to three foot by three foot here's where I think the the four plants suits very well uh, possibly up to six um, if there's small plants or autoflowers and four foot by four foot minimum of four I would suggest um, 
uh, they would be fairly large plants, each of them. They'd be filling a two foot by two foot square, which is quite big, or um, up to nine, so having a, 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 a row of three, column of three, and uh, up to five by five, etc. So then it's how much light do, um, do you need for these size tents? So again, there is a big range here and um, you know, typically in the past people would have targeted say with HPS, a 600 watt HPS and a 4x4 targets around 550 micromoles. We're not really restricted by um, the levels that we used to target with HID. That's because HID put out a lot of heat and it was more the quantity of heat you're putting into that space was the limiting factor. Now we've pushed those average power levels much higher with LEDs and therefore push the potential yield from the space much higher with LEDs. So my general guidance would be about 800 micromoles. And the reason is you can go way higher. As you can see on the green line there without CO2, added CO2, you can push it up to 1500 micromoles, you're still getting increased growth rate, but the rate, re the, the return rate reduces. So the amount you're getting back for the extra energy you're put in reduces. If people want to grow more, I would say use more space. So add another tent, add more space, and then you're um, still staying in that maximum efficiency zone where you, um, for every watt you get, you put in, you're getting the best return in terms of growth rate per watt. You can see here, once it gets past about 800 micromoles, the rate of increase of growth and growth rate reduces uh, as you're adding more light. Now you can um, uh, add CO2 and supplement with CO2, usually the PPM, so the parts per minute of CO2 should match your power intensity. So for example, if you're targeting 1200 micromoles, you'd target 1200 PPM of CO2. Difficulty I have with that is that it means a closed system. That means you, are, um, you want to keep that CO2 in the tent, not be extracting it out. So normally you need to extract air out of the tent to keep the heat down, to manage the temperature and to draw new um, CO2 in. In this scenario, if you're using um, either canisters or the grow bags, by the way, the little mushroom bags and the sugar ones and all those are, are junk. They just don't produce enough CO2. You get very, very marginal improvements, but they're not really going to imp uh, significantly improve your performance. So really you need canisters with valves and um, sensors and all this sort of equipment. And then because you need to keep the temperature down in the tent, you want to keep the CO2 in the tent. Now how do you keep the temperature down? Well, normally then you'd have to use an air conditioning system which is going to recirculate the air with the CO2 in it rather than suck it out and blow it into atmosphere. So it, end up, it ends up being quite expensive for the CO2, for all the equipment, uh, for the air conditioning, everything else. You're really increasing your, your cost dramatically. So if somebody wants to grow more, normally I say just add um, more area to your grow. So add another tent or get a bigger tent, whatever. So. In terms of light levels, I'm going to be talking about this 800 micromole range. You can, of course, adjust above and below that, as I've said, but uh, you'll be um, either, if you go below, you're, you're not using your space to its maximum. If you go above, as I said, you're, you're getting a, re a reduced return. So with that in mind, uh, recommending the wattage of grow light you should have in your tent. This is purely for LEDs now. Um, for, to achieve that 800 micromoles per meter squared per second. So per square foot, it's about 30 watts of high efficiency LED. This is LEDs at around the 2.3, 2.4 usable PPF per watt. So as tested in my grow light tests on the channel. Um, and that translates in terms of meter squared to 330 watts. And you can see the various wattages for the various um, size areas, which would be exactly the wattages, for example, I recommend of my grow. So we do um, an array two for a two by two and it's 125 watts, so it just fits in. We do for a four by two, the array four, which is um, 250 watts, um, et cetera, et cetera. So trying to uh, target the grow light size to give you the optimum setup for your grow space 
uh, by default. Now this, you may argue that the 800 micromoles is a little bit too high for auto flowers because you have the lights on all day, they're getting this intensity right through a long day. Um, and uh, you could argue that you need reduced, so down to around five or 600 micromoles or less wattage for area. Um, but I think if you're buying a light that you want the capacity to do anything that hits you, so whether you're doing photos or auto, so this is what I'd recommend in terms of wattage, grow light wattage for um, by area. Um, yeah, a lot of information, a little bit of controversy, I'm sure, around some of the recommendations. People are going to have different experiences. I'd be really interested in hearing about those, so please let me know where you think I'm off or wrong, uh, or maybe um, you know the range isn't quite accurate. I'd be delighted to hear and share your, um, your yield, what you're achieving, either by area or by wattage. If you've done that calc, it'd be really interesting to hear um, I think a lot of new growers particularly get put off by the three and four grams per watt. I don't particularly like those targets because they disincentivize you. You're, and then people are running around trying to find solutions to problems that don't really exist because they're actually performing really well. Um, so anyway, that's a, one of my little bugbears. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed. As I said, please leave the comments below, share with other growers, and uh, yeah, take care.